want to talk about why harmless bacteria can turn bad. So there's all sorts of different relationships that we have with bacteria. You have good bacteria that exchange with us. We provide a home for them to live in. They give us vitamins, immune protection. Then you have another relationship with bacteria, which is commensal, in which one organism benefits with another without hurting them or necessarily helping them. So in this relationship, they're just living there. They're just neutral. They're not causing us any harm. And then sometimes they will flip in the relationship with us and turn pathogenic, which they can cause disease. And there's a handful of these bacteria that can do this. A certain types of strep bacteria, uh, E. coli, Candida, that basically is harmless. And then something happens and they flip and they start creating harm. In fact, uh, some of these bacteria in a 30 day cycle can go through 500 generations and morph into something very harmful to our bodies. They can go from harmless to actually killing us. Now the key factor that changes this relationship is the environment that they live in. It's the environmental pressures. So when this environment changes in pH, oxygen levels, oxidative stress, temperature, chemicals, and this can all occur with what you put in your body, what you expose your body to, and I'm mainly talking diet. Based on what you feed your body, the environment can change from one spectrum to the other. People that live on junk food uh, end up having a lot more pathogens. People that eat healthier have less pathogens. And of course, this also relates to plants. If a plant is given enough nutrients, they have less pests, they have less pathogens, they have less disease. And so the nutrients build up our own defenses. So in other words, the good bacteria can actually defend us and protect us against the pathogens. So um, one big factor that changes the environment really fast is antibiotics because for some reason, bacteria don't like to be killed. So when you try to kill them, they resist being killed because they want to survive. And so they start to become super bugs resistant to that antibiotic and they flip their relationship and they start to harm us. An example of that would be this uh, infection called MRSA. And you usually see this in hospitals and MRSA is a very highly resistant strand of bacteria that is very difficult to kill uh, with anything, including antibiotics. Another example would be C. diff. And there's another adaptation that occurs too with bacteria. When they're stressed because of environmental pressures is they start developing um, these little igloos to live in. That's called biofilms. So they start to develop colonies and protect themselves against anything that can try to kill them. And now we have a situation because these biofilms uh, are very, very difficult to um, get rid of, and they're linked to a lot of disease and pathologies. Now, the other thing I want to point out is this. Um, when our bodies are under stress, um, our immune system becomes weakened. In other words, all the white blood cells become suppressed. So stress increases cortisol, that shuts down our immune system. And this makes us very susceptible to developing additional infections and susceptible to pathologies and pathogens. So out of all the things that can harm us from an infection, I would say stress, hands down, is the single biggest factor. Now, the next thing I wanna bring up is an interesting strategy that bacteria do when they're under stress. It's called horizontal gene transfer. So when these bacteria are under stress, they will literally grab the DNA from other dead bacteria, pull them into themselves, and start to manipulate that DNA to become more of a pathogen. It's kind of like DNA sex, where you're mixing this other DNA from a bacteria or a virus. I mean, that's just wild. So there are some things you can do about this to prevent these pathogens from existing. Number one, make sure that the environment that your microbes live in is um, very, very uh, friendly. Make sure you only take an antibiotic if you absolutely positively need it. And also, if you are taking an antibiotic, also at the same time, take a probiotic. And the other thing is do whatever you can to minimize your stress level 
watch my videos on that. Make sure your diet is very, very good because especially if you're on a high carb diet, you're eating a lot of sugar, that's going to feed the unfriendly yeast and candida and make them grow because they live on glucose. But the other thing that you can do that's very, very important, start doing intermittent fasting. Fasting strengthens your immune system. Fasting strengthens the diversity of your good bacteria. And so fasting is a necessity, uh, not only as a preventative thing, um, but also if you actually have pathogens in your body. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.